everyone. Uh, welcome to the Katie Helper Show. Uh, this is a kind of last minute, um, important, I think, uh, breaking news stream. I just wanted to tell people about something important related to um, friend of sh show, Stephen Donziger. As people probably know, uh, Stephen Donziger has been on the show a bunch. Uh, he is a human rights lawyer. He is an environmental lawyer. He basically... Um, Whoops, let me make sure my, is this thing on? All right. Uh, okay, I think this is correct, right? Is my mic on? So Steven Donziger is a, um, uh, no, it's not right. Mic is on. Hold on. Let me know if you can hear me now. I think you can hear me. Okay. Can you hear me now? All right. So the news is basically that um, it's not, sadly, it's not that surprising but Steven Donziger has to go to prison um, tomorrow. So that's uh, October 27th. And um, he wanted to be able to not be in prison until the appeal was ex exhausted and decided upon. But uh, that's not what the decision was. So basically... Um, just to make it clear, we still need the Justice Department to do the same thing, which is to free Steve Donziger. I'm just going to share uh, his latest update, which he tweeted out. Um, breaking after 100 pages of legal briefing, the appellate court today denied my release. Uh, hold on. Okay, breaking. After 100 pages of legal briefing, the appellate court today denied my release in 10 words. This is not due process, nor is it justice. I must report to prison by tomorrow afternoon. We will get through this. And I wanted to make sure that people knew about this for a couple of reasons. So just so people can see, uh, this is the decision of the U.S. Uh, Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. It is hereby ordered that the bail motion is denied. Okay, the bail motion is denied. After consultation with the parties, the appeal is expedited according to the following schedule. Appellant's brief is due November 5th, 2021 at noon. Appellee's brief is due November 15, 2021 at noon. The reply brief, if any, is due November 18th, 2021 at noon. The clerk is directed to calendar the appeal for the first available panel. So the important thing there is that he has to um, go to prison basically tomorrow tomorrow. Um, afternoon. He missed a report to prison. And they were trying to, he and his lawyers were trying to make it so that he didn't have to uh, serve time while the appeal was still being um, responded to. So this is really depressing. Obviously, people, in case people don't know, Stephen Donziger um, is a human rights lawyer, an environmental lawyer. He represented over 30,000 um people of Ecuador who were poisoned by Chevron. Chevron decided to cut corners, not line these pits. And um, to save like a dollar or $3 a pit, I can't remember, something ridiculous. It was just to save money. And because of that, people had their water and their land poisoned. Uh, Steven Donziger was one of the people who helped represent these people who were poisoned. Um, the cancer rates and birth defects uh, went up because of this. Um, it's a really, I mean, disgusting story in the first place. The disgusting story is the poisoning of the water in the uh, in the Amazon in Ecuador. That's already disgusting. There was some, like, not, I, I don't even want to say there was justice done. There was a modicum of justice done when um, Stephen Donziger and other lawyers, uh, lawyers based in Ecuador and Stephen Donziger, um, uh, sued Chevron for poisoning the water, and it was a historic, unprecedented settlement. They uh, were had to pay $9.5 billion, but that hasn't happened because Chevron pushed back, and instead of being in trouble, they somehow finagled it so that Stephen Donziger is in trouble. So he's been under house arrest for over two years. Then he was sentenced to the maximum sentence of six months. Um, the judge in his original trial or the original trial against him, that judge um, wanted to uh, charge him with contempt because he refused to hand over his cell phone and laptop. Okay. He refused to hand over his cell phone and laptop. And then the judge uh, 
assigned it to another judge because assigned it to another prosecutor because the federal district of New York, Southern district of New York, the federal prosecutor's office didn't want to prosecute because it's such a ridiculous case. I mean, they said technically the lack of re- lack of resources, but obviously everyone knows it was because it was an embarrassing case. So what does the judge do? Judge Kaplan, he hires a firm that uh, had represented Chevron, okay? Total conflict of interest. He appoints a firm that has represented Chevron um, and uh, that firm prosecuted uh, Donziger and then the judge who was handpicked by handpicked by Kaplan, which again is very um, improper. It's a major ethical problem to handpick another judge. It's just not done. So that other judge, uh, Loretta Preska, is a Federalist Society judge. So they're very right wing. They're kind of scary, and they receive funding from Chevron. So it's conflicts of interest all over the place, and um, a corporate prosecution. And this is why the prosecution of Donziger has been condemned by Amnesty International, which says that not only should he be freed, but he should be paid reparations um, because he should not have been uh, in, under house arrest for two years. Amazon. Uh, uh, so Amnesty International has also condemned his uh, his prosecution. Um, 64 Nobel laureates. Uh Various members of Congress oppose it. And so the reason that I'm sharing this is not just because it's breaking news and it's important, but tomorrow, so depending on when you're watching this, uh, Wednesday the 27th, um, there will be a protest in Washington, D.C., um, and it'll be attended by people like uh, Rashida Tlaib. So shout out to the few brave members of Congress who are standing up for Donziger. That includes uh, Rashida Tlaib. That includes um, McGovern. Um, I know that in the past, AOC has tweeted out about it. I'm not sh- and, and she and Cori Bush, Jamal Bowman signed a letter. But we need to make sure that people aren't just signing letters. They need to be making lots of noise about this. People need to be demanding that Merrick Garland, the attorney general, drop, uh, take take the case back from basically Chevron's private uh, prosecution. So as Don Zucker has said on this show, he's probably the only person who wants to be prosecuted. He's basically he's saying back. he would like um, for the, you know, if the if the actual attorney general's office took it, then maybe um, there would be some justice as opposed to this rogue um, corporate prosecution to which he's been subjected. Um, Let's see. Uh, I'll get to some comments in a second. I just want to make sure people get this uh, important information out there. So um, let me just get, and again, sorry, I'm being a little, it's a little bit, uh, just trying to get everyone the information. Okay, here's here. Oh, you guys are really going to want to go to this protest that's happening Wednesday, October 27th at 11 a.m. Because look at this, look who's going to be there besides Tlaib and McGovern and, oh, Rep. Chewy Garcia. Okay. Lucy Lawless, as in Zena, right? That's her name, Zena? Lucy Lawless. Hold on. Lucy Lawless. That's her name, right? That's who she is, Zena? So, yeah, the news is that he has to report to prison um, Wednesday afternoon, the 27th. Obviously, people Marianne Williamson is very upset about this. I was talking to her. Um, she um, it, uh, opposes this. Um, we know Chris Hedges opposes this. You know, uh, Crystal Ball has been very vocal about this. It is a really disgusting miscarriage of justice. And um, Donziger did nothing wrong except for defend people who deserve to be represented he dared to challenge corporate power and that does get you into a lot of trouble so here's the info about the protest there's also um a bus that's leaving from new york city let me get you the info on that um that's at five leaving at 5 a.m um one second let me give you the info on that and everyone thank you so much for tuning in um this is also by the way related to a, a a similar case, another disgusting miscarriage of justice, which is um, Julian Assange. So basically, not okay. So I, we have a couple things to do today. First, I'm telling you. Hold on. 
actually you guys want to see a little video that's that um let me show you a little video someone sent this to me I, it's very important and it's related to what we're talking about hold on and it also has the information about tomorrow's protest on second video file okay let's see if this works uh no it has a unique something um i'll just tell you the info then instead Um, so basically again, there's the protest. Okay. It is at, it's a press conference. Sorry. It's a press conference. We'll make it a protest. It's a press conference. Open to the public October 27th at 11 AM at house triangle, Capitol Hills, East front house triangle, DC, Capitol Hills, East front. And if you are in New York city or the tri-state area and you would like to go, um, there is a private charter bus courtesy of Amazon watch. Protect the pro protest in Amnesty International, departing New York City at 5 a.m. from the New York Public Library at 476 Fifth Avenue. Again, that's New York Public Library at 476 Fifth Avenue at 41st Street. And to find out more about any of this, make sure you go to Eco Shaker, um, their Instagram. That's E C O S H A K E R, Eco Shaker. Um, and shout out to Eco Shaker and everyone for putting this together. I, I'm not going to be able to make it. I have to tape tomorrow. But um, make sure that if you're in D.C., you show up. Really, there's just got to go. Please just show up. 11 a.m. press conference open to public. Um, and then if you're in New York City and you have the opportunity, the time, the schedule to go, then show up at 5 a.m. Oy, oy, oy. Right? Is that what did I make up that? It's, yeah, it's 5 a.m. leaving New York Public Library. Um, and this is just a really incredibly important story. And it goes, um, I was going to say it goes well with, but that's really disturbing. It doesn't go well with it at all. Uh, it goes, it's like the opposite of going well with It's It's, it pairs terribly with, um, of course, what's happening to Julian Assange. And I just want to give a shout out to the uh, journalists who covered Julian Assange. And sadly, much like the uh, Donziger case, you can count them on one hand. Um, one of the one of the really great people who covers uh, the Assange case is Kevin Gastola, and everyone should be following him. He's going to be covering the, the, the latest in the, the Assange trial, the extradition case. Let me um, share his um, Twitter page so people can follow him. Okay, Kevin Gastola, showing you this also, just in case the spelling is at all challenging. Um, okay, Kevin Gastola, here we go. Make sure you follow his Twitter. He is at K-G-O-S-Z-T-O-L-A, -G -G Kevin Gastola. Um, he's the managing editor of Shadowproof. Um, he is going to be... Um, covering the Assange um, appeal, the extradition case, and he, he goes through what's happening tomorrow, um, what will be happening tomorrow. And here, as you can see, Kevin has tweeted about both um, Donziger and Assange, because again, um, Donziger has gone after uh, corporate power and uh, Assange has gone after state power. Of course, the two overlap quite a bit. Um, but those are kind of their focuses, their ex areas of expertise. So um, Kevin Gasola tweets out, Attorney Merrick Garland is allowing this to happen. The Justice Department could have stopped this a long time ago, but they apparently care about care more about Chevron than the law, which is true. Um, don't forget that. It's incredibly important that, that justice... Um, Oh, here's some good news. Former Weather Underground radical David Gil Gilbert has been granted parole after 40 years behind bars for his role in the deadly 1981 Brinks robbery. Um, he was driving a getaway car. So his fellow name murder, which is very controversial. Um, and here, uh, here you guys, you, why don't, oh no, it's 49 minutes. That's too long. Um, the good news is though that, uh, Kevin is credentialed and he will be covering the Assange appeal hearing on October 27th and 28th. Um, and if you don't understand what is happening tomorrow, then you can go to this guide that he put together um, and he will be credentialed. In fact, he needs to update his article to make sure people know that. But um, uh, 
here is just a little explainer about what's happening with Assange. And make sure that you check out. We're going to get much better uh, video quality of the stand-up for Assange thing that we did the other day. Uh, I was in that Randy Credico and Lee Camp. Shout out to both of them. They put it together. But it was an event. Oh, I look really Morticia-like. It was an event for Assange, and it had great stand-up comedy. Um, I mean, I performed in it, but I'm talking about other people. Um, Lee Camp and Ted Alexandro. Um, and we're going to be putting up better quality than we had put up the other day. It wasn't that great. Oh, thank you. Hey, Independent Left, thanks for sharing this. Kevin Gastola's Twitter. Also, Richard Medhurst will be covering that also. Um, Margaret Kimberly was also at the event the other day. It was great. Um, so I'll be putting on much better, we'll be putting out much better quality. But here's the important thing. Let me just share um, what, so people know what's going on with, with Assange. Um, a guide to the U.S. government's appeal in the ex Assange extradition case. Um, on October 27th, the High Court of Justice in the United Kingdom will hear the Crown prosecution. Um, let me make this bigger. We'll hear the Crown Prosecution Service argue on behalf of the United States government that a lower court improperly blocked the U.S. from extraditing WikiLeaks founder, WikiLeaks founder uh, Julian Assange. The proceedings in London are expected to last two days and will involve five grounds for appeal that were previously approved by the High Court. Um, District Court Judge Vanessa Bar Barretzer ruled on January, 24 January 4th that Assange's mental health was such that it would be oppressive to extradite him to the U.S., but two days later, she accepted the U.S.'s the U.S. government's objection and ordered him to remain in jail where her decision was appealed. Assange is detained at Her Majesty's Prison, Belmarsh in London, a high security prison where he has been held since he was expelled from the Ecuador embassy on April 11, 2019. He faces 18 charges, 17 of which are charges under the Espionage Act. The Espionage Act is a U.S. law passed in 1917 that the Justice Department has increasingly wielded against media sources who share classified documents or talk about sensitive information with journalists. Because Assange is the first publisher to be charged under the law press, freedom organizations around the world have roundly condemned the political pr prosecution. It is also part of a troubling development where the U.S. government increasingly seeks to impose its domestic laws on foreign nationals. Assange is an Australian citizen and has no ties whatsoever to the United States. Um, uh, each of the charges, aside from a conspiracy to commit a computer crime offense, solely relate to the documents that were submitted by U.S. Army whistleblower Chelsea Manning to WikiLeaks in 2010, the Iraq and Afghanistan war logs, U.S. state embassy cables, and the Guantanamo files. The general allegations in the indictment against Assange directly criminalize the publication of information. Corruption has marred the case at every stage. Yahoo News reported in late September that CIA Director Mike Pompeo obsessed over Assange after WikiLeaks released CIA files in 2017, exposing the agency's cyber warfare capabilities. Agents sketched out plans to kidnap or even kill Assange. The CIA backed an espionage operation against the Ecuador embassy that was conducted by Undercover Global. They collected legally privileged conversations among attorneys and broke into the personal devices of guests visiting Assange. By the way, Undercover Global, UC Global, is a Spanish security firm, private firm. Um, the FBI worked with an informant named Siggy Thorderson, a serial liar and sociopath who embezzled funds from the WikiLeaks store and sexually preyed on underage boys. He fabricated allegations against Assange that were later retracted in an interview with an Icelandic reporter. Icelandic authorities jailed Thorderson on 24th of September to stop him from perpetrating additional financial fraud schemes. Assange's personal archive, confidential medical data, and legally privileged materials were seized from the embassy following his arrest and handed over to the FBI. Nonetheless, President Joe Biden's administration has pressed onward with the case against Assange, refusing to answer questions from reporters about they will, why they will not drop charges. Um, and the following is a guide to each of the grounds for the U.S. appeal that the Crown Prosecution Service will present to the High Court of Justice. Um, Assange's team will have an opportunity to respond to each argument is based on the submissions to the appeals court from the Crown Prosecution Service and Assange's legal team. So there he is. He put it together. Wow, this is great. Make sure you go over this if you have time. If not, we're going to have uh, an update on this this week. And thank you, guys, by the way. I know that last week we had a kind of a watch party or we had a Rose McGowan pre-taped interview. Um, then I had a Sunday show 
where we, I basically live streamed um, a great event, an amazing event. I'm doing this thing now. That's just an update. And uh, uh, but Thursday we'll be back to our normal, normally programmed shows. We'll have a, a, a live show. Um, and what I want to do now, though, quickly was um, I need I want to make sure that people and I invite people to do this with me. Let me quickly. We're going to do two things. One is I'm going to make a phone call. Um, let me actually copy and paste uh, the info about the. Hold on one second. Where's the thing where the free dons are? I put the numbers in there. So we're going to do some phone calls, a really quick phone call because it's late. But again, I want to make sure if you're watching, make sure you know about this. It's so important. OK, if you know if you are watching this. I stayed up to talk about this because I want to make sure that people knew about this protest in case they're in D.C. Um, and also we're just new about this latest decision. So um, hold on one second. Let me update this. So we're going to call. I did this before, but it's time to call Merrick Garland again. You know the spiel. And take out your, your phones if you have them with you. Maybe you don't know the spiel, but we'll go through it. Okay, here's the comment line. 202-353-1555. 202-353-1555. Okay. Um, let me see. I think I bet it's a banner. Let me see. Yeah, I have all those um, mofos in there. Okay, hold on one second. Okay. I should have said that. It's not appropriate. Okay, so I'm calling 353. The Department of Justice comment line. Although your opinion is valuable to us, we cannot return calls made to this number. If you would like to contact the Department of Justice, and you press one. including the Attorney General, please leave your comment regarding civil and constitutional rights. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. Hi, my name is Katie Halper. I'm calling for um, the Attorney General. I would like to um, ask him to please, um, Attorney General Garland, to please uh, take back the prosecution of Stephen Donziger. This is a uh, an environmental lawyer, a human rights lawyer. As you know, his prosecution has been condemned by 64 Nobel laureates, by Amnesty International, by the United Nations. And that is because it's been a corporate prosecution and corporate persecution of a human rights defender. Um, this has been unprecedented. The case has been um, taken out of the uh, judicial department. It's been put into the hands of a corporation, namely Chevron and Chevron enabling um, law firms. The judge uh, totally broke with convention by... Um, appointing a law firm to prosecute Mr. Donziger because the uh, your own department declined it. So please free Stephen Donziger, at the very least, take back the case. Um, do not let this corporate prosecution move forward. Also, while you're at it, you know, I know you're a man of uh, rule of law. You're not like Donald Trump. You're not like that, you know, Cheeto Mussolini thug um, law violating uh, monster. So what you need to do is just like Obama decided not to go after, remember Obama decided not to pursue Assange. He's your guy. He didn't do anything really to get you on the court, but whatever, he's your guy. You're on his team. You're on team Obama, not team Trump. Remember Obama decided not to, to go after Assange. So free Assange, drop the charges against, drop the charges against Assange and drop the charges against Donziger. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. All right. I hope that recorded. All right. All right. So everyone do that. Pick up the phones, make your calls, say free Assange, say free Donziger. You can get specific. Um, Donziger laid out exactly what you can say. Again, it's it's after midnight. So I was trying to do it in a slightly, you know, coherent way. But this is really important. Get your butts out there if you're in D.C. to this press conference. Cover this case. Um we have to come together. We have to demand freedom for both Donziger and for Assange. This is really embarrassing. It's really scary. Um, they're different cases, but they're also somewhat similar. And in fact, 
Oh, I know. I'm going to leave us with, I'm gonna, we can go out with a bang. I'm going to show you two videos really quickly. One's a short thing that's, um, that Eco Shaker put together. Hold on one second. All right. So we're going to watch that. And then we're going to watch something that I put together. Um, hold on one second. It's based on a chat that I have with Marianne Williamson, but she very passionately puts together exactly what Assange and Donziger have in common. So I'm going to play that. Um, hold on a second. Why can't I drag this into a window? Hold on. I'm still trying to play this. Why won't it? I think there's something about this file that won't let me play. Usually I can just drag it into something. Hold on, let me try the other thing. Yeah, it's it's the way. Okay, so I'm gonna play you this um, Marianne Williamson thing. Let's make sure that we can. Let me make sure that the. Okay. Been... Ah. Can you guys hear this? Hold on, you haven't heard it yet. Hold on. And sorry for the jump cuts, but whatevs. Okay. God, and again, sorry about the lighting. All right, I got. And Don. Okay. Tell me if you can hear. Hold on. Hold on. This is from July, Marianne with Marianne Williamson. You've been really active and vocal about something that's really important, which is Julian Assange. Yeah. Can you tell us why that case is so important to you? And also on a related note, the case of Stephen Donziger. Yeah. Yeah. All right. On the Julian Assange issue, you know, I, I, I talk, right, uh, a lot about the military industrial complex, about uh, particularly secrecy within the American military, and particularly how, unlike when I was growing up, the American left seems to me to give... Um, too little attention to the issue of, of U.S. military imperialism specifically and the military budget and so forth. So when I read what Assange had actually revealed, um, when I read about the collateral damage, when I read about the uh, indiscriminate shooting into crowds that on the part of collateral Blackwater, murder video, you know, yeah. uh, Blackwater uh, mercenaries, when I read about the people who killed at the checkpoints, how many of the men were trying to take women to the hospital, when I read about the uh, horrors of the civilian deaths that we had not known about. Then I realized that I myself uh, had been uh, not duped, but you know, his personality wasn't a yeah, bad interest that, no, to yeah, me. And right. I just kind of didn't go there. Once I realized that it's not just a case and not that, you know, it, not that the First Amendment rights aren't uh, everything, and they are. And I certainly was very aware of the Daniel Ellsberg case and right. so forth. So the more I read, the more I knew, the more I thought, wow, wow. Wow. And of course, at that point, once you have three wows, you don't right. keep your mouth shut. Right. So I haven't kept my mouth shut. Yeah. And it's a really stunning story because it's it's so meta because there's the Assange story and then there's the media silence. I mean, which is striking. I think that there are so many ways in which we're simply not allowing our hearts to register um, the viciousness of the system when people challenge it these days. That's what really what we're right. talking about here. And at what point are you going to take a stand? And you asked before about Stephen Donziger, and that's a very similar case in the sense of the viciousness. Whether you're talking about big oil, Chevron, in the case of Stephen Donziger, or the military-industrial complex in the case of Julian Assange, you're talking about something very similar. And that is what happens when human rights activists, human rights lawyers, environmentalist lawyers, or journalists get really close to a serious substantive challenge that might actually be successful and how they don't, you know, and I know, of course, from my own experience, what they try to do is just erase you. What they try to do is just mock you, peripheralize you, make a joke, et cetera. But if you are successful in coming close to the bone, they come at you. And that is what has happened sure. with Julian Assange. Mm -hmm. And that is what has happened with Stephen Donziger. And we must stand up. And that's why 
you talk about Assange and Donziger. It's why I talk about Assange and Donziger. So many of our colleagues uh, talk about Assange and Donziger. And at this point, both on the left and the right, people recognizing, you know, my father used to say, what they can do to anybody, they can do to you. Right. And we, and, and you know, Stephen Donziger has been in, under house arrest here in New York for over seven, uh, 700 days. This is outrageous. Yeah. And I don't think most Americans are aware that a, a huge multinational corporation like Chevron, that there's a loophole that actually allows them to use a U.S. courtroom to prosecute a private citizen. So I just think this is, you know, um, you and I are uh, women and women know that, you know, we're, we're taught from the time we're little girls, if somebody attacks you in the alley, just starts yelling and don't mm -hmm. don't stop. We just need to start yelling and not stop Yeah, about all these things. But what we have to do is to concentrate on principle. Right. The, the U.S. government had to drop its case against right. Daniel Ellsberg. Right. What they have now been caught doing in terms of their conspiring yes. with uh, Sigi Thedorsen, the, the hacker who we now know is lying, is much worse than the plumbers during the Watergate yeah, scandal exactly. trying to break into Daniel uh, Daniel Ellsberg's uh, psychiatrist's office. Yes, office. Now, the, office, what, yeah. what concerns me is that in those days, we really got that. We really got how important the Pentagon Papers were, and we got that the government overreached and that the government had to back off. That's what matters here. And remember, Barack Obama exactly. had decided not to go after Assange because he knew you're getting too close to basic First Amendment issues, and also, are you going to then go after the, the New, New York, York Times? Times? Right. The New York Times. So right. it's interesting that Trump had said, oh, I like WikiLeaks. Then, of course, once he was in, he, you know, everybody First says he, he said he should be executed. Mm -hmm. Then he said he liked it. Then once he was in, right, Pompeo decided to pursue him, yeah. right, in yeah. a way that Obama had not decided right, to right. do. And on his last day in office, did the appeal to the British government. Right. So, so yeah, if, really you know, he didn't do anything as Daniel Ellsberg, you and I both yeah. interviewed Ellsberg. Of the Pentagon Papers, just so mm -hmm. everyone knows. Yeah. Yes. And Julian Assange didn't do anything that Daniel Ellsberg didn't do. Right. I mean, he did what journalists do. This is a big, big deal. And once again, going back to the Donziger case, this is all of this is an effort to freeze dissent. Yeah. This is all an effort to freeze dissent. We have a corporatist agenda that is represented, whether it's big oil, military industrial complex, big ag, uh, uh, big chemical companies, health insurance companies, big pharma, the monopolies, corporate monopolies mm. of these huge uh, multinational corporate interests. Anyway, they're coming after you, know, just like they want to. You know, 700 days and under house arrest right. um, uh, for Stephen Donziger. They want to throw him in prison for six months. All for winning it, with, and just so everyone knows, for that's for and people do because they watch the show. But okay, but just so everyone in case they're tuning in, mm -hmm. Donziger is under house arrest for winning, helping win a settlement against Chevron. Okay, um, for poisoning the Amazon in Ecuador, okay. basically. So right. So let's, let's talk about even what that was. This was in the 1960s. This was when Texaco, the then yeah. oil giant Texaco, in order to save three dollars a pit. Yeah, this is Texaco is what Chevron is now. Well, this Chevron was, has yeah. bought Chevron bought, yeah, bought yeah, right. Texaco. Yeah. Okay, so Ecuadorian uh, environmental standards were less than ours, and we know that ours aren't high enough, right. right? But in order to save $3 a pit, these pits were completely unlined. They actually told these farmers, no, this oil is good for you to have it in the water. It's like milk. It's got vitamins in it. They poisoned the water in uh, of the Amazon there. They poisoned the land, poisoned the bodies. Thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people's bodies that have been harmed by this, the rates of cancer, et cetera. When Stephen Donziger and others tried to bring this to court in the United States, Chevron said, oh, we want it brought to Ecuador and we will abide by, we will stand by whatever the judgment is there. I guess they thought that they would have an easier time buying off people in Ecuador or whatever. There was a $9 billion judgment. Ecuador says, no, we're, <laughs> no, no, no. They could have cleaned this up so many times over by now. And their strategy is to go after Stephen Donziger. Once again, much like, see, it's important that we see the parallel mm. here uh, between Donziger and Assange. It's saying to journalists and human rights activists and environmental uh, lawyers, anybody uh, who goes close to challenging the fundamentalist corporatist agenda, stop right there. And if you do not stop, we're coming after you. Yeah. And that's what's happening now. And that's why we have to stand up for these people. We do now know that the main witness against Assange, because they had to focus on the hacking because of the New York Times problem, right, where they couldn't focus on the release of the news because then all these places that the, the main witness, this 
this guy who volunteered briefly at, at WikiLeaks, who they based almost all of the hacking stuff on, not only is he, does he happen to be a uh, literal uh, pedophile and a diagnosed sociopath, okay? He has admitted that he lied. Not only and, that, he, he clearly what the U.S. government, what the, the Justice Department had said to him, they knew he was... I right, of course, they, they offered it, yeah. So this, and they offered him immunity because yeah, right. he was scared to right. death. Yeah. Turns out he had really no serious connection right. yes. with uh, with Julian Assange yeah. anyway. And the Iceland, uh, Iceland, Icelandic government has staged a complaint. Yes. Um, so again, just for, for the optics of it, just pretend that you care about this. Just You can even say to your friends and family who you want to impress as, I don't know, going hard after WikiLeaks, you can say, oh, we really tried, but unfortunately there was a witness. You know, I'm just giving Biden spitballing, giving him some options. You don't have to have egg on your face. You can you can do this without having egg on your face. So, so yeah, we're just trying to give you guys help uh, with that. Yeah, we're just trying to help yeah. the Biden administration. Yeah, yeah we're just doing, we're giving free people. Free uh, comms tips. Oh, are people saying nice things and happy birthday yes. to us? Um, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is cute. As much as, I guess, as much as Katie's duct tape and bubblegum production standards are sometimes annoying, I'm going to miss it when, if she improves her production quality. I'll keep watching either way. Thank you, I guess. Thank you. It's a donation, so I'll thank you for that. I think it's cool that you're so garage band. Thank you. Yeah, garage band. I like that. Um, what else was I going to look at or say right now? Um, Obama's policy on Assange was not to go after him. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, he um, knew that he was getting too close right. to the bone on First Amendment rights yes. and that he would have to go uh, after the New York Times. Yeah. So, Biden, we're talking to you. Uh, we know you're watching. Everybody really look up the Stephen Donziger, yeah. Donziger Defense Fund, I think it's called, freedonziger.org. Please look up the Donziger issue and do what you can. We want Merrick Garland to step yes. in here yeah. and take it away. It's ridiculous that a private corporation can actually use a U.S. courtroom right. to uh, prosecute a U.S. citizen. It should just be done through the courts. It's ridiculous. And the office, the prosecutor, uh, the federal, uh, the the what is it the district southern district prosecutor's office wouldn't do it and the judge assigned a private yeah corporate we law firm about. to prosecute mm -hmm. uh donziger okay so that that was it that was marianne from this summer um and it's all applies except for now we know in case you missed it the breaking news is that uh, Stephen Donziger, who again has served over two years under house arrest in a corporate prosecution and corporate persecution that has been condemned by Amnesty International, the UN, uh, 64 Nobel laureates. He wanted to not have to go to prison until his appeal was ruled on, um, but they just announced that he has to report to prison Wednesday afternoon. So what there is to do is to call, Don uh, call Merrick Garland, which I just did, the numbers in the description. Also, call your Congress people, call your senators, call them, say you, that you are demanding that Merrick Garland do the right thing, that he um, take the case back, the case, the case against uh, Stephen Donziger, that he stop the corporate prosecution of Stephen Donziger, also that he stop prosecuting Julian Assange. I think Marianne made the case extremely well. I'm not going to add anything to it. Also, uh, so so call your your um, Congress people, your senators, call Garland. Also, look at this. Can we just, lest you had any confusion over which side you were on, look at this prick who responded to Don Ziger's tweet. Um, sorry if I'm I'm cursing a little bit, but a total what a what a what an a freaking. I'm trying to keep it, you know, kosher. What a, a freaking gosh darn prick this guy is it's so disgusting let me just show you this this total uh i can't even so dumb so incredibly dumb uh he doesn't even get that he should keep his mouth shut hold on let me show you this guy this freak so i so when donziger tweeted out that he uh when donziger tweeted out the decision saying the ruling that he has to report to prison wednesday he tweeted that out, and some total putts responded. Hold on. It's really kind of um, amazing that, that someone responded this way. Hold on. 
Okay. So, um, this total prick tweets out couldn't have happened to a, uh, bigger fraud. He tweets that to, to Donziger, right? When Donziger tweets breaking after a hundred pages of legal briefing, the appellate court today denied my release in 10 words. This is not due process of law, nor is it justice. I must report to prison by tomorrow afternoon. We will get through this. Couldn't have happened to a bigger fraud. <laughs> Marianne. Shout out to a lot of people who are who watch the show, actually. Marianne um, tweeted in response. Ouch. Jonathan Cadman, penis with blue eyes in your profile pic. Harsh. But I, uh, I tweeted. Let's see. You have Chevron in your bio, you shameless scumbag, which she is. That was me being uh, diplomatic. Amazing that you're dumb, dumb enough to put this stuff in writing. You're absolutely just as disgusting and clueless as you look. I mean, look at that face. He really, Jesus Christ. Um, it's amazing how you're not locked up, yet it looks like you've never seen the sun. I don't like to focus on this, but sometimes you have to. Also, look at his bio. Upstream policy, API Energy, former White House for fucking Trump, by the way. Excuse me. Um, Chevron. He was for, at Chevron, U.S. Senate, forever Oregonian. Sorry about, sorry, Oregon. And you work for Trump, just typical ghoul. Um, oh, there's more. I found out some more stuff about him. Any work for Trump, just typical ghoul. Oh, I had a typo there. I think that's why. Oh, gosh darn it. You're such a loser. You didn't even make it. Wait, let me delete this. You're such a loser. You didn't even make it into the Wikipedia pages of your equally odious, but infinitely more accomplished Trumpian father and sister. Lol, your dad lost the first ever elected dumb, uh, elected to his congressional district. Guess you have dislikability in your genes. Maybe it's not that you're unaccomplished, but that you're so odious that your odious relatives are ashamed of you. Unclear. Anyway, you know you're on the right side when a Chevron guy calls you a fraud. All right. Well, guys, everyone, make sure that you... I'm serious. Call call Merrick Garland. If you're in D.C., show up and, and show up to that protest. Um, also, call your reps. Call your senators. Tell them to free... That you need Merrick Garland to free... Um, Stephen Donziger and Julian Assange. And uh, I will be updating people on both of those stories. Um, and thanks again so much for coming to the Katie Halper Show, for watching the Katie Halper Show. We'll be back on Thursday night, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, you guys are the best. Uh, keep the faith. Try to hold on. Use your voices. I know this maybe sounds a little corny, but um, please, yeah, lose your uh, use your voices and um, uh, make the phone calls um, and free Assange, free Donziger, and um, see you guys on Thursday. Bye. And make sure you subscribe. Subscribe. Sometimes some I don't know why you guys aren't getting the um updates um make sure you make your calls guys you never know what'll happen and i'll show you guys i'll bring out Bodie on thursday night bye everyone